the Fibonacci search technique. This search technique depends on a numerical sequence called the Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci numbers are defined by the following recursion. F0 is equal to F1 equals to 1. And Fk plus 2 is equal to Fk plus 1 plus Fk. For k equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. The first few terms of this sequence are as follows. F0 is 1. F1 is 1. F2 is obtained from the recursion by putting k equals to 0 here. So that will mean F2 is equal to F1 plus F0. That is 1 plus 1 will give us 2. F3 is F1 plus F2, which is 1 plus 2 equals to 3. F4 is F2 plus F3, and that is 2 plus 3, which is 5. F5 is F3 plus F4, which is 3 plus 5, and that is 8. F6 is F4 plus F5, which is 5 plus 8. And that gave us 13. F7 is F5 plus F6. That is 8 plus 13, which is equal to 21. F8 is F6 plus F7. That is 13 plus 21, and that is 34. F9 is F7 plus F8, which is 21 plus 34, and that is 55. F10 is F8 plus F9. That is 34 plus 55, which is equal to 89, and so on. Given the initial interval of uncertainty, I1 equals to the closed interval from A to B. That's given this interval from A to B. From the point A to the point B. The point X1 and X2 are selected such that as the point X1 is selected here and the point X2 is selected here such that the length L2 is this X2 minus A. That's the length of the second interval of uncertainty is from here to here, which was to x2 minus a, or b minus x1. That is from x1 to the point b, which is b minus x1. At third iteration, the length of the interval of uncertainty follows the following recursion. Lk equal to Lk plus 1 plus Lk plus 2. For k equals to 1, 2, 3, 2, n minus 2. Where Ln is less than or equal to epsilon is taken to be the last interval of uncertainty. Starting from Ln and walking backwards, we obtain the following. Ln plus 1 is equal to Ln and in terms of Fibonacci numbers, this is F0 times Ln. We recall F0 is equal to 1. Next is Ln. And you know Ln is equal to Ln, and that is equal to F1 Ln. Recall also that F1 is equal to 1. Next is Ln minus 1. 
which is equal to ln plus ln plus 1. But ln plus 1 is ln. So ln plus ln will give us 2 ln. And recall that f2 is 2. So we can write 2 ln as f2 ln. Next is ln minus 2, which is equal to ln minus 1 plus ln. But ln minus 1 is 2 ln. So 2 ln plus ln will give us 3 ln, which is equal to f3 ln. So if we continue this way, we will get to ln minus k, which is equal to k plus 1 times ln. And that's equal to fk plus 1 times ln. Please observe the pattern. When it is 1 here, what we have here is 2. When it is 2 here, what we have here is 3. So when it is k here, what we have is k plus 1. So if we let n minus k equal to r, it follows that k is equal to n minus r. So that we can write this as fn minus r plus 1 times ln. And from here, we can obtain lr plus 1. That's when r is increased by 1. This will now become fn minus r times ln. Now for r equals to 1, l1 is equal to fn times ln. That's when you put r equals to 1 here. That will give us l1 equals to n minus 1 plus 1 is fn, then times ln. If we divide lr plus 1, by L1. That will give us Fn minus R times Ln divided by Fn times Ln. And that will be Fn minus R all over Fn. So therefore, Lr plus 1 is equal to Fn minus R all over Fn times L1. For R equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. Here, n is the smallest integer such that l1 all over ln is less than or equal to fn all over f1. That is, by cross multiplication, we have fn is greater than or equal to l1 all over ln times f1. But since f1 is equal to 1, this is equal to l1 all over ln. Now we select our first point, x1, r equal to br plus lr plus 1. And x2, r is equal to ar plus lr plus 1. Now, let us take the Fibonacci search algorithm. Step 1. Determine the number of iterations, n, such that the final length of interval of uncertainty, ln, is less than or equal to epsilon, for arbitrarily prescribed accuracy, epsilon. That is, n is the smallest integer such that fn is greater than or equal to l1 all over ln, which is greater than or equal to l1 all over epsilon, since ln is required to be less than or equal to epsilon. Step 2. Set R equals to 1 
and then compute the following LR plus 1 equal to FN minus R all over FN times L1 X1R equal to BR minus LR plus 1 X2R equal to AR plus LR plus 1. Step 3 is F of X1R less than F of X2R? If yes, set AR equals to X1R and BR equals to BR. That is choose the interval x1 r to b. If no, set a r equals to a r and b r equals to x2 r. That is choose the interval from a r to x2 r. Step 4. Is R equal to N? If yes, stop and compute X star equals to X1 R plus X2 R all over 2 to be the optimum solution. If no, set R equals to R plus 1 and return to step 2. Example 3. Solve the optimization problem. Minimize f of x equals to 2x squared minus exponent x over the interval 0 to 1 with an error in x star of not more than 0 0.05. Solution The length of our initial interval of uncertainty L1 is equal to 1. That is, 1 minus 0 will give us 1. And the length of the last interval of uncertainty, Ln, should be less than or equal to epsilon, which is equal to 0 0.05. We then determine N such that Fn is greater than or equal to L1 all over epsilon. That is 1 divided by 0 0.05, which is equal to 20. So we determine n such that fn is greater than or equal to 20. And this n is equal to 8. Since f8 is equal to 21. Here is it. f0 is 1. f1 is 1. f2 is 2. f3 is 3. f4 is 5 f6 is 8, f7 is 13, f8 is 21. So the smallest integer for which fn is greater than 20 is 8. Because f8 is 21, which is greater than 20. So we now compute x1 of 1. That's x11 is equal to b1 minus l2, which is equal to 1 minus l2 is f7 all over f8 times l1, which is equal to 1 minus f7 is 13, f8 is 21, 1 minus 13 over 21, and that will give us 0 0.381 x2 is a1 plus l2 which is 0 plus f7 over f8 times l1 and that is 13 over 21 which is equal to 0 0.619 we summarize our result in this table the first column is counting the iterations r from 0 1 2 and so on then the next column is the Fibonacci number Fn minus R. 
this is fn this is the length of the interval at the r plus 1 iteration this is ar br x1 x2 f of x1 and f of x2 so when r is equal to 0 recall that n is 8 so we have uh, 8 minus 0 which is 8 f8 is 21 f8 here is 21 l1 that's the length of the initial interval of uncertainty is 1 then a0 is 0 b0 is 1 that is the end point of our initial interval is from 0 to 1 x1 is 0 while x2 is 1 f of x1 when you put x1 equals to 0 into our formula 2x squared minus exponent x that will give us um, 0 minus exponent 0 which is 1 that will give us minus 1 and this is f of x2 that's f of 1 will give us minus 0 0.718 now comparing these two values minus 1.000 is less than minus 0 0.718 so we choose the next interval of uncertainty to be from a to x2 here a is 0 while x2 is 1 so our next interval of uncertainty is still 0 to 1 so when r equals to 1 what we have here will be 8 minus 1 which is 7 so this is f7 recall f7 is 13 f8 is still 21 then l2 l2 is 0 0.619 here is 0 here is 1 x1 will give us 0 0.381 while x2 will give us 0 0.619 the value of the function at x1 is minus 1.173 and at x2 the value of the function is minus 1.097 again this figure is less than this so our next interval of uncertainty is from a to x2 a is 0 and x2 is 0 0.619 so we put r equals to 2 we continue this way until we obtain the length of the interval of uncertainty to be less than or equal to 0 0.05 please observe that at this point when r equals to 6 the length of the interval of uncertainty is 0 0.048 and the values of x1 at this point is 0 0.381 and that of x2 is 0 0.381 if we continue if you move to the next point r the next iteration r which is equal to 7 you see that the length of the interval of uncertainty is still 0 0.048 and x1 is 0 0.333 while x2 is 0 0.381 so at this point we can stop finding the average of these two will give us the optimum solution to the problem the optimum solution is therefore x star equal to x1n plus x2n all over 2 which is equal to 0 0.333 plus 0 0.381 divided by 2 and this will give us 0 0.357.